This is another of Brother Richard Hart's encounters with the homeless. He looked like the angriest man I had ever seen, his face in a constant sneer. Maybe it was to avoid having to talk to people. Maybe it was his defense mechanism to make up for his small stature. But he seemed to be unapproachable. When I finally met him, it was like his reputation had preceded him. I was not deterred and determined to get to know more about this man who was known simply as Yankee. I decided to use that as my starting point. Find out why he was called that. It turned out that he was a deportee, one of the many people who were sent back to their home country after serving jail sentences in the USA. I didn't bother to go into the details of his criminal activity though. After that initial conversation, we began a cautious relationship where we never had any lengthy conversations, but a nod of the head in passing sufficed. He would approach me at times for help to get slippers, clothes, skin cream or Vaseline. And once a pair of glasses, he would tell me what he wanted and ask me to get it for him and not give him the money. Sometimes he would ask for a loaf of bread or something to eat. My parents always taught us about not refusing food to anyone. I try always to have food at the church for that reason. Many times I have even given up my breakfast or lunch, so I would always oblige Yankee with a loaf of bread and also something to go with it after all. Who wants to eat dry bread? In spite of his perpetually angry expression, I found that he was quite polite, addressing me as sir or pastor. One day I asked if he had any family living in Trinidad. He said that he did have family, but he was forced to live on the streets. He had no constant income, so he was forced to beg for handouts on the streets. He would sometimes sleep in the back part of the old church building but had to move on when it was earmarked for renovation for use by the city corporation. He gave me some names and asked me to try to locate them since he had lost contact with them after losing all his possessions in a fire. He also asked for help to contact his mother and daughter in New York. I happened to see a post in a WhatsApp group asking about him. It seems that someone had seen a post regarding him on a Facebook page and had reposted it. I followed it up by contacting the missing persons from Dad and Tobago Facebook group. They sent the information about his daughter. It verified his story. As he had already asked me some time before about help to contact his mother and daughter in New York. I walked to Lower High Street by the banks where he usually would be seen asking for money. I didn't see him. In checking further, I went back to the old church car park. There he was, taking a bath in a corner of the yard. I waited till he was done and then we sat and talked a bit. I found out that it was his birthday. I then broke the news that his daughter wanted to get in touch with him. He got super excited when he heard that. I told him to meet me at the main church. On my way back, I bought two slices of cake. When he came over, we had cake and pedrax together to celebrate his birthday. I also had prayer with him. Then later that evening, I was able to connect with the daughter on a WhatsApp video call. That was a heartbreaking moment. As soon as the connection was made and he saw his daughter's face, probably for the first time in many years, the very first thing he said and kept repeating was, I love you. He broke down in tears and put his head on my chest sobbing. And the daughter was saying, I love you too, daddy. And she broke down as well. He kept calling her by his deceased wife's name because she looked everything like her mother. He got to see and talk to his mother, even though she didn't recognize him as she suffers from dementia. He kept kissing the phone screen and saying, I love you, mommy. You're the best mother in the whole world. I love you. I tell you, when I saw him show his love for his mother and daughter, I broke down as well. I had to hold him when he put his head on my chest. He couldn't stop talking about his daughter. 
and I heard the pride in his voice. I heard the love in his voice when he spoke to his mother. This is a man we look at as a vagrant, a homeless person. I've seen him trip off and curse everyone around, but he always showed respect and would listen when I tell him to calm down. We have a good relationship now, and he will often meet me and give updates on his circumstances. He still lives on the hill to the side of the former church building and says his biggest worry is the constant bugs that sting and bite him. Once again, I shared this so we could realize the importance of showing kindness, love and compassion to all, regardless of how they may look. Yankee is a diminutive man, far from five feet tall. But I remember the words of the song, our revival escorted sang, a thing called love. I saw him crying like a little whipped pup because of love. You can't see it with your eyes or hold it in your hand. But like the wind that covers all land, it's strong enough to move the heart of any man. This thing called love. Ever since time, nothing's ever been found stronger than love. He has told the man what is good and what God requires of thee only to do justly and to love kindness and to walk humbly with thy God. Micah 6 and verse 8. Kindness, love and compassion. This is my God and I love you.